Lago de Atitlan, an endoric lake in the highlands of Salola, Guatemala. This lake, formed in a caldera in the Sierra Madre Mountains, sits at the base of three active volcanoes with a surface elevation of over 5,100 feet. Lake Atitlan has a surface area of about 50 square miles and a crazy max depth of 1,100 feet. But more than just the numbers, Lake Atitlan is one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. All right, all you divers out there, welcome to Rest and Wreck. I'm Church. This video is the first of a new series I'm starting called Dive Site Reviews. If you like videos like this, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss a new video. I dove Lake Atitlan whenever I was mobilized to Guatemala in the summer of 2019. I took a boat to a little town on the north shore of the lake called Santa Cruz La Laguana. When I got there, I went to La Iguana Perdida, a lakefront hostel and location of the only dive shop on Lake Atitlan, ATI Divers. Since Lake Atitlan is at 5,100 feet above sea level, I had to get altitude diver trained. I met with my dive instructor, George. George? Correction, Latin America, Jorge. Jorge trained me and I got my paddy card. Pshh. Yeah. Look at me rocking my local Guatemalan swag. Bruh. We got into the boat and went to the first dive site, Agua Caliente. Cross your legs, your fins cross. Which means hot water in Spanish. Okay, perfect. The name comes from something truly unique to this dive site. So, the volcanoes that are around Lake Atitlan, they're not dead. There's a lot of geothermal activity in the area. There's a place on this dive where you can stick your hand into the sand and actually feel the heat off the magma. Mm. Mm. After feeling the sand, we made our way over to the boulders. The second dive we made was a wall dive called Castle del Mundo. It's named after the hotel that's right above the dive site on the cliff. The name is also attributed to the underwater hotel at this site, complete with a landing and an indoor bar. This is me on the landing now. He would have taken me to explore it, but given this was only my second dive outside of basic open water, he wasn't going to take me into an overhead environment. But here's some footage of another group doing it. Now the cliff doesn't taper off underwater, it keeps going. This dive was easily 100 feet deep though we only went 60. All right, let's talk dive site characteristics. Temperature. This is a high altitude lake. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit chilly most of the year. I dove it on the 4th of July. It was 70 degrees at 60 feet. Maximum depth. The deepest part of this lake is 1,115 feet. So you can dive as deep as your qualifications allow you to dive. I'm not sure if there's anything to see at that depth or if you even could see at that depth due to the turbidity, but if you're a hardcore tech diver and you're down to explore, I guarantee you no one's been to the bottom of that lake. Speaking of turbidity, let's talk visibility. The visibility, it's not great. You're looking at about 20 to 30 feet of viz. I dove on a clear day at high noon and I didn't have any issues seeing my surroundings or dive guide at 60 feet, but the colors are distorted from the bacteria in the lake. Bacteria is not the only thing that lives in this lake. Let's talk ecology. So the biggest species you're going to see on these dives is bass. Bass are everywhere in this lake. A little backstory on this. So back in the 50s, the government of Guatemala introduced a non-native species of bass into the lake in order to draw in more tourism. These non-native black bass ate all the other creatures in the lake because they had no natural predators. 
and that led to an increase in bacteria. So that actually caused more turbidity. It's a huge mess. If you want to read into it, I'll link the article to Time Magazine so you can read it. The most unique creature in the lake is the freshwater crabs. There were several other fish as well, but as far as unique features go, nothing beats the geothermal sand. I haven't experienced anything like that at any other dive site. Online resources. So Lake Atitlan, while very beautiful, is not particularly known for its scuba diving. That said, I was able to find quite a bit of information about it online. There are a few diving reviews online like Alex in Wonderland. Uh, there's a few YouTube videos about it as well. ATI Divers has a really good website. It gives you prices, courses, and more details about Lake Atitlan. ATI Divers. So like I mentioned earlier, they are the only dive shop at Lake Atitlan. So if you're in need of gear, tanks, weights, a dive guide, a dive boat, they're your only option. Now one of the advantages of them being the only dive shop on Lake Atitlan is the fact that there is no competition at the dive site. There's no congestion, you know you'll be the only ones there. Now that said, ATI Divers is a great dive outfit. They were knowledgeable, they were friendly, they knew their way around the lake, and they catered to my skills, or in my case, lack thereof. They don't have a robust storefront with inventory. They only provide dive excursions and training. But the best part about it was the price. So I purchased two dives with dive guide, rental gear, paddy altitude diver training, and it cost me about $250. I really like ATI divers, but this is a dive site review, not a dive shop review. I love the dives, but given the visibility and the lack of things to see, I have to rate this dive site as a two star. Do I recommend diving Lake Atitlan? It's a unique dive spot. It's a beautiful location. Do I think you need to fly to Guatemala to dive here? No. However, if you're visiting Guatemala and you happen to be in the area, it's definitely worth taking a day to do. But you do not want to have your mask like this. A wave comes, you trip and fall, Anything can take that mask right off your head. Well, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it down in the comments or you can message me directly. As always, 